there's a long list of verbs about Jesus in the second article of the Creed. And if you look closely at the first half of them, you'll see that they are mainly passive verbs. That is, these are things that are done to Jesus, not done by Jesus. Not that Jesus was carried along unwittingly in his earthly life all the way to the cross, but rather he allows these things to happen to himself so that your forgiveness and salvation would be assured. He was conceived, was born, suffered, was crucified, died, and was buried. In the catechism, we call this the state of humiliation. Not that Jesus was humiliated, that he was embarrassed or ashamed to do these things for you. Instead, as St. Paul said to the Philippians, in humility, Jesus did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. The one true God's love for you is so deep and it is so strong that the eternal Son of God set aside his divine majesty and divine honor and divine glory to take on your flesh, to do these things for you on this earth so that you don't have to. Not that you in your sinful state could even begin to come close to keeping God's perfect law on your own, We've all failed that miserably, which is why Jesus had to come in the first place. So all of these things, birth and suffering and death and burial, these are things that must be done as embodied man, as the incarnate one in the flesh. Jesus, the eternal Son of God, part of the indivisible Trinity, God of God, light of light, and so on cannot take your place. He cannot live your life. He cannot fulfill God's law and become the perfect sacrifice to cover all of your sin and the sin of the whole world as a disembodied spirit. The writer to the Hebrews says in chapter 4 that we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect, has been tempted as we are and is yet without sin. And all of this happens because the Son of God was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Thanks be to God for a love so deep that he doesn't even think that it's a bother to set aside his glory and honor to take on your flesh so that you can live with him in eternity. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts, we have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.